I was coming out of a restaurant in Santa Monica called Ivy's. It was some years ago, and I'd had dinner with uh, one of the, the agents that books me, and as we were going back to our respective cars, a very hopeful homeless man approached us, a, a street beggar. And he said, hey, buddy, could you spare a hundred bucks? <laughs> if you heard me last year, you heard me say this. People think speakers make stuff up to get a laugh. I make nothing up. My life is far stranger than my limited imagination. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. <laughs> so this, this beggar says, buddy, can you spare a hundred bucks? And I normally don't engage, but this stopped me. I said, you know what, man? I said, if you'd asked for a dollar, I'd have given it to you without thinking about it. If you'd asked for $10, I might have given it to you just because you had the chutzpah to ask. But $100, are you kidding me? He said, look, buddy, either give me the money or don't. Just don't tell me how to run my business. <laughs> my formal education, as you'd all expect, is in agricultural economics. You go, oh, there he goes, bragging about being an ag economist. No, I really am. If you don't have a good definition for an economist, an economist is somebody who really, really loves numbers but just didn't have the personality to become an accountant. <laughs> Which most people think is pretty funny unless they're an accountant. When Hunter was five, I would drive him to preschool so Darley didn't have to bundle up his little brother Jack. I had taken Hunter to school for a few years and a few years, a few days, and then I flew out to give a speech, and Darla was driving Hunter to school. And as she's driving him to preschool, Hunter, strapped in the kitty seat in the back of the Ford Explorer, says, Hey, Mom, where are all the damn drivers today? <laughs> now, my wife, being deeply Southern, is offended by bad language from daddy, much less the babies. And this causes her to ask the obvious question. Honey, why would you say that? And Hunter says, because when dad drives me to school, the streets are full of damn drivers. I wish I could take you to the gift shop of the Denver Zoo. I'd let you look at the animals on your own time. The gift shop of the Denver Zoo houses the most I I incredible example of value creation in the last 50 years of American business history. Now let's just assume for the next few minutes that you run a zoo. And I realize if you're a pastor or in management, this won't be a big leap of imagination, but, but let's just assume... <laughs> let's just assume you, you got a real zoo. There's three big expense items. Number one is feed, because the animals eat odd things. Number two is someone to feed them, personnel. And number three, and I'm going to speak euphemistically, Dr. Engel, uh, a way to get rid of the feed when the animal returns it. <laughs> because you can't throw wildebeest dung in the dumpster. You can't take buffalo waste and put it on the lawn. You have to have it treated to EPA standards and hauled away. And somebody at the Denver Zoo, very Fred-like, said, what if we sell it? And today, in the Denver Zoo, there was a coffee can-sized container about this big, four-color label, and it's called Zoop. <laughs> I'll let you figure out how they came up with the name, but for $9.95, for $9 you can buy a can of exotic animal excrement to take home and put on your garden or compost pile. Now, I'm going to make just a, a tiny risk. Please indulge me, but I'm going to make a tiny risk to make a bigger point. If you can add value to crap, you can add value to anything. <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that can listen to my pastor, Jim Dixon, at Cherry Hills Community Church in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. I can listen to Jim preach on brotherly love for 40 minutes. But by the time I get to the parking lot, if you get in my way, I will mow you over. <laughs> you do not have to be clairvoyant to be a good leader, but you got to be clear. You don't have to be able to predict the future. I have friends that are futurists. I'm amused by the term futurist. I believe that predicting the future is very easy. Predicting it correctly is very hard. <laughs> I'm a presentologist. <laughs> you don't need a title to be a leader. But if you have a title, it won't mess you up if you do it right. 